As cyber defenders, one of the most important data sources we need to be able to record and follow is DNS traffic. However, there are some new standards that are being introduced that are going to make our lives a lot more difficult in this respect. That is DNS over HTTPS. As compared to traditional DNS, which we could record because it was unencrypted, DNS over HTTPS is going to be hiding a lot of DNS traffic from us and maybe even allow DNS where we don't even know it's in use. So stick around if you want to learn about this new protocol and how to observe what it looks like in Wireshark. We're going to cover all that and more today on the 12 Days of Cyber Defense. Okay, so for those not familiar with DNS, it's basically kind of like the phone book of the internet. You type in a domain name in a browser, it goes and it looks up the IP address for that domain name, that gets returned to you, and then your browser can connect to that IP address and load all of the content. So we can very easily see this in Wireshark. If we open up Wireshark, and I'm using Remnix here, use an ampersand at the end so I can still use the terminal while Wireshark stays open. And I'm going to click on my interface for the internet, which is ENS33 in this case. If I double click that, and I produce a DNS request for my own website, let's say. Here you can see the IP address was returned. This is a A record request. And if I go to Wireshark and I hit stop, and I type DNS, just to filter it down, you'll see the request right there, right? It's an outgoing query and the query's response with the IP. Following this, if this were a web browser, it would then make an HTTP request to my website. This shows what your ISP can see and what you as a blue team can see with traditional DNS. You're monitoring the wire and you can see the user has looked up a specific domain name and you can record that and you can put it into your SIM. Or if you're an ISP, you can record where all of your users are going and then you can use that for advertising or whatever. Now, as a private individual, of course, you don't necessarily want your ISP seeing all the domain names you're loading. And as a blue team, you do want this to be available for the users that you have on the network because you have to protect them and make sure their organization laptops are not loading anything that's malicious, right? Any ransomware domain names or things like that. So we're kind of looking at this from two angles. There is this new protocol called DNS over HTTPS that makes it so that this is an encrypted interaction, which means someone observing the network can no longer see what domain name someone is trying to get the IP address for. So as a private citizen, you probably wanna turn this on because that means that your ISP would not be able to see where you're going from observing the network. That's a key point, right? If you're still using their DNS servers, then they can still log the query because you're asking them for the answer. And of course, they're still going to see it. On an organizational level, if people are using your organization's DNS servers and they're using DOH, then you can still see where they're going and that's great. But the thing is, most people don't have DOH supported within their organization right now, which means since browsers like Firefox now support it and sometimes even turn it on by default, you might have users doing DNS requests to outside DNS servers that you can't control that you don't even know are DNS. And so what I wanna go over in this video is how to see those queries and what it looks like if you were to decrypt them. Uh, and then just kind of point out the problem that if you don't have some kind of way of doing TLS interception, it's going to be very difficult to tell what is and what is not DNS. So here's what we're going to do to make it so that we can see our own DOH queries, and then you're going to have to figure out how you can do this at an organizational level going into the future, because DOH is going to be a big, important factor in defending a network going forward. What we're going to do is export an environment variable that will tell Firefox when it uses DOH to write the keys we need to decrypt it into a file that we can then tell Wireshark to load. So here's what we're going to do. We type export SSL key log file and then the name of the file you want to write it to. So I'm going to use home remnix documents day six SSL key log file dot text. There we go. If you want to see if this is set currently or not, you can do a command like this, which just lists all the environment variables and then looks for this one in particular. It's there. So great. This should be working. Now what we're going to do is open up Firefox from this terminal specifically. You can't just click the icon because it won't load this setting. So type Firefox in here, hit enter, and then it will bring up Firefox. The next thing we have to do is make sure HTTP, oh, sorry, we have to make sure DOH is turned on. So we go into edit, we go to preferences in the general tab all the way down on the bottom. There is a network settings option. We click that, we go to the bottom of this, 
and we check the box for enable DNS over HTTPS, and then we have to pick who we're going to use it with. This may already be turned on for you depending on what country you live in or if you've set it before or not. Let's pick Cloudflare here, hit OK, and now Firefox is going to use DNS over HTTPS for all of our website traffic. So now we're going to record some DOH connections because it's turned on in Firefox. So here's what it takes to record DOH. First, we need to close Firefox again. We close Firefox because you have to have Wireshark started running and capturing when you start Firefox, otherwise it won't get the right keys that it needs to decrypt the DOH traffic. So close Firefox, start Wireshark over again, hit continue without saving, you'll get this capture going. Go back to our terminal and we restart Firefox again. And what we should now see is inside Wireshark, there will be now a bunch of traffic starting to fill up. If we clear out our filter here, we'll see TLS traffic is starting to flow. Inside Firefox, what we're going to do is load a few websites. isc.sans.edu, for example. Let's load another one, maybe wired.com. And once that's done, we can stop our traffic. Now looking at this, we have a whole bunch of TLS, right? We can filter it down and look for DNS traffic. And what's in here is, yeah, there's a few things, but if you look through these, none of these are wired and none of these are isc.sans.edu. So this is just a little stuff that I guess happened uh, by default when you open up Firefox with the traditional DNS, I don't know. But what we don't have is our actual DNS traffic because our DNS traffic is now TLS encrypted, which means somewhere in these packets is our DNS lookups and the fact that I just went to isc.sans.edu and wired.com. As a blue team, you can see why this is a problem now. We're trying to monitor the network and we're saying, where are people going? And we can't tell anymore because we have been blinded by DOH. If you are the ISP and you're looking at this traffic and I, John the person, have just turned on DOH, now they can't see where I'm going, which is cool. Well, we have to figure out a way to deal with this. And ultimately the answer is going to have to be interception of DOH traffic and doing TLS decryption. But that is a more complex topic to do on an organizational level. So what we're gonna do here is just look at our own traffic. And it's really easy to do. Uh, here's what we have to do in Wireshark to make this work. We go into edit, we go to preferences, we go to protocols and we can type in TLS. And in here, the pre-master secret log file name. If we click on browse, we can now click this file that we told Firefox to write. And now when we click that, aha, decrypted traffic. Pretty awesome, right? And notice DOH. So now we can see our DNS requests. And this traffic is now fully visible, but this is only the traffic from Firefox within this virtual machine. This would not apply to the larger operating system. This would not work on an organizational level. This just works for one program for your one virtual machine where you told Firefox, hey, write these extra keys so that I can decrypt it. So this kind of just works on a single level. So here is an example of a DNS query now. We have a TLS connection being made within that we see an HTTP2 connection listed here with a post request for slash DNS query. And then below that, we see the actual request, example.com. This is what your DNS requests actually look like now if you can decrypt them when they use the DOH protocol. And so what I can do is now scroll through all of these things and see where are my DNS requests going and we get to see everything at this point. So this is another one to telemetrymozilla.com. We have Monday, Amazon, ISC, there's our one there, hybrid analysis, central ops, some of the things that probably had on that start page for Firefox. All of these are now visible as DOH requests. So that is what your traffic now looks like. And if you want to unfold these things, you can start to look at some of the details in this. This is HTTP2. We're going to talk about that in a later video, but it is a post request to a URI with a name DNS query. Your DNS traffic is now actually HTTP traffic. This is kind of like, and so that's what's happening here, right? There is a post request to a web server. That web server is speaking HTTP2. It receives the post request. 
It knows it's a DNS query because this is how the standard looks. It looks at the content of that request. It says, oh, hey, a DNS query. It does the lookup, gets the answer, passes it back to the browser. And so from a network-based observer, all of this stuff is going to be invisible. The exception being, if your organization runs the DOH serving service, right? If you set up a DOH server within your environment and you have your users using DOH to that server, you will still get the logs, of course. But from a network-based observation point, if you do not do decryption, you will not be able to see DNS requests. The only thing you'll be able to do is look at IP addresses and say 104, 16, 249, 249. I know that's Cloudflare. Uh, someone's probably using DOH, but you won't know what domains they're looking up. And so this is going to be a very, very important thing for blue teams going into the future. And I wanted to show everyone what this new standard looks like and how you can play with it on your own. So there you have it, the new DNS standards. As a private citizen, you want to turn DOH on. There's no reason for your ISP to be able to uh, read your DNS queries and just protect them, stop them from being tampered with and all that good stuff, it's great. As a blue team, trying to see where your employees are going and protect their computers and make sure they stay safe, we do still need to see this data. So your organization is going to have to come up with a strategy to figure out how to deal with this. If they're doing TLS interception, you can see that there is hope to see where they're still going, but you're going to have to be able to identify that traffic, get in its way and intercept it and make sure that it's not sneaking out to some unexpected DNS server that's rogue on the internet somewhere controlled by a malware author. This is one of those brand new things on the cutting edge. Wanted to bring this to everyone because it's going to be a big major item we have to deal with as a SOC going forward. So hopefully that's useful for you. If you liked what you saw here, hit the like button, subscribe and tell a friend, help me get the word out about this series. If you wanted to see more detail on this and more information, I do have the SEC 450 Blue Team Fundamentals class at SANS and a number of other resources down in the description for this video, the podcast, free security operations guide and more. So check that out. And thanks again for watching. Catch you next time on the 12 days of cyber defense.